now messenger RNA is free to go inside the cytoplasm or um, uh, is ready for translation. The process of translation is different in prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, as we know that they do not have a true nucleus. They have a nucleoid region though, but true nucleus is not present. So, what happened that whenever their messenger RNA and this actually their nucleoid region, their chromosome is almost continuous with the cytoplasm. So, as their messenger RNA comes out of the transcription bubble, it start translating, translating itself. The ribosomes come and attach to it and they start translating it. But in eukaryotic chromosomes, this is a more complex process because they have a nucleus and the messenger RNA has to travel through the nucleus, um, uh, move out through the nuclear pores into the cytoplasm where ribosomes are present and then they have to be translated. So, the messenger RNA in um, eukaryotes is modified. Because it have to move a long path, uh, it is exposed to various enzymes present inside the nucleus and cytoplasm which are called nucleases and proteases. Um, to protect it from the enzyme action, uh, two uh, modifications occur in the messenger RNA. One is called a cap, addition of a cap uh, which is a 7-methyl GTP cap on its 5 end, there is a 7-methyl GTP molecule which is attached and on its other end a poly A tail that is AAAA, uh, adenine, 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 adenine nucleotides are added. Uh, these are the two major additions which protect this molecule from the action of nucleases and the proteases. There is another difference between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic DNA. The eukaryotic DNA have some extra sequences inside their uh, integrated in their genes, uh, we call them introns. These introns have to be removed. If we look at in a diagram, in the diagram in front of you, you can see that there are in green sequences of DNA called exon, then comes an intron, then comes an exon and then comes an intron. These exons are actually the parts of genes. These introns are non-coding sequences. These does not have to code. So, what happened that before messenger RNA is translated into the proteins, these introns has to be removed. So, there is another difference between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic translation that before translation, messenger RNA is we can say spliced, we call it RNA splicing, breaking down and removal of these introns from the messenger RNA molecule. If down there we have look, this is a coded gene in which in, uh, in this is a coded a messenger RNA molecule in which the introns are removed uh, by different types of uh, molecular processes, events. Next is translation. Translation is from messenger RNA to protein. Messenger RNA have to code itself in the form of protein. The translation process consists of three steps. If we divide it um, over the length of time, we can call them uh, three stages or three steps, initiation, elongation and termination. Initiation is the start of translation. When messenger RNA in eukaryotes comes out of the nucleus through the nuclear pores and enters into the cytoplasm, uh, it encounters the ribosomes. Uh, we know that ribosomes are the protein making machinery of the cells. But what happened in prokaryotes that when their messenger RNA starts forming coming out of transcription bubbles, it directly comes out into the cytoplasm and ribosomes come and attach to it and start translating. So, in eukaryotes introns are removed and it comes out of the nucleus, reach the cytoplasm and then it is ready to be translated. What happen actually? Uh, the when messenger RNA in eukaryotes reaches in the cytoplasm, the ribosome which have two subunits, one is small and one is large, the small subunit comes and attaches to a specific site on the messenger RNA. We call it a start codon from where the actual gene starts. When the first codon is set um, on the piece on, on a, uh, the, when the small subunit is set on uh, the first codon, then the large ribosomal unit comes and attaches to the um, smaller unit and the messenger RNA molecule. This larger subunit as you can see in the diagram, has three sites, E site, the exit site, P site, 
uh, the peptidyl site and A site the aminosyl site. E site from where a transfer RNA have to exit. The P site where the peptide, where the transfer RNA with the peptide, the whole protein uh, chain which is elongating is present. And the A site where the newer transfer RNA comes uh, bringing a nucleotide. Then the first transfer RNA uh, comes and attaches to the start codon. Actually, transfer RNA is the, an RNA molecule which have an anti-codon present on itself. For example, if um, uh, the start codon is AUG, then on the transfer RNA, there will be a, there will be a complementary sequence. That uh, due to this complementary sequence, uh, transfer RNA bringing the amino acid because according to the uh, codon, anti-codon present on the transfer RNA, it will bring a specific amino acid uh, from the surrounding cytoplasm. Transfer RNA comes and attach to the P site. After that, next transfer RNA brings another amino acid according to the codon uh, read by the uh, ribosome by the transfer RNA. Uh, next transfer RNA come and attaches to the A site. Then a peptide bond is formed between the first amino acid and the second amino acid. When this peptide bond is formed, then the ribosome moves ahead on the messenger RNA. The result is this, that now the first amino acid is present on the E site and the uh, second amino acid is present uh, on the P site in place of the first amino acid. And the A site, as you can see in the diagram, is free. When this A site becomes free, then the next transfer RNA identifies this site and brings the amino acid um, according to the anticodon present on this transfer RNA uh, and comes and attaches to the A site. When it attaches to the A site, then again a peptide bond is formed between the now the second amino acid and the third amino acid. When this bond is formed, then the ribosome again moves ahead. Uh, due to its movement, the first amino acid, uh, the first transfer RNA, which brought the first amino acid according to the AUG, AUG codon, the methionine, is released from the E site or the exit site. And now, uh, the second transfer RNA comes on the exit site, E site, and the third uh, transfer RNA comes on the P site, and A site is again free. Then again, according to the codon read by the transfer RNA, fourth transfer RNA comes and attaches to the site. Again, a peptide bond is formed, and this process goes ahead until a stop codon comes. At the end of the messenger RNA, there is a codon called the stop codon. This codon uh, does not uh, matches to any transfer RNA. Um, uh, in place of the transfer RNA, a protein complex called releasing factor comes and attaches to that site, that codon. And when the releasing factor comes and attached to the codon, the polypeptide is released into the cytoplasm uh, that is broken down from the transfer RNA. Uh, transfer RNA is um, also released and the ribosomal subunits they are separated and uh, the messenger RNA is also released from the ribosome. This is how the process of translation completes. So initiation, when small ribosomal subunit comes and attach to the messenger RNA, then the large ribosomal unit come and attaches to the messenger RNA. Um, then the transfer RNA comes according to the codons bringing amino acids and the ribosome moves on the uh, messenger RNA to make a polypeptide chain. At the end, due to releasing factor, they are released. So uh, a new protein is formed in this way. This may be a structural protein or this may be a functional protein.